day to all of you. In the last class, uh, we had been discussing about the PID controller. We had begun our discussion um, and uh, uh, started uh, with uh, the integrator as a controller and including it into our scheme of uh, the system. We saw in the last class uh, how the integrator uh, behaves and uh, um, the way it gives infinite gain near the DC or the steady state region. Because it gives infinite gain near the DC or the steady state portion of your response, the uh, error is 0 at that portions of the response. Near the transients, the integrator that is at the higher frequency, the integrator gain is uh, much lower, significantly lower and therefore, the error is not 0 in those portions. So, whenever you have a disturbance, whenever there is a change in the input, we saw a change in the step input and near around the time zone of the step change, you will definitely see an error in the output and as time progresses and the system reaches a steady state or the DC zone, you will see that the error reduces to 0 because the gain at DC for the integrator is infinite. So, this fact we try to uh, understand better by trying to implement it in uh, MATLAB simulation environment too. We will of course, uh, use that environment um, uh, in the discussions today also. So, if you look at the example that we had taken in the uh, last class, we had a sample um, system, an example system as shown here. This is a third order system, you have one pole at uh, S is equal to 1 by 0 0.1 or S is equal to 10 there is another pole at S is equal to 2.5, another pole at S is equal to 0.8. Now, this third order system is being controlled by a control input here, which is coming at the output as the output of the controller. And the controller that we had been using is just a pure integrator an integrator scaled by a gain k i. So, this is what we try to um, uh, include into the MATLAB environment and in the MATLAB environment, we included the controller as a numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial. So, also the plant as a numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial. We use the convolution function to do the multiplication of these uh, polynomials. And we saw the, we saw the uh, time response of the output that is the one which is fed back, the signal that is fed back compared with the reference input which was a step input. We also saw the frequency response of this integrator and try to compare the behavior, um, uh, um, understand the behavior of this entire system. So, we shall uh, continue to proceed in this fashion we shall call the controller from now on as GC, the controller transfer function as GC and we shall call the plant or the converter 
as gp the plant transfer function so the closed loop transfer function would of course be gc gp by 1 plus gc gp and this we will call it as the system closed loop system transfer function gs and this has a numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial ns and ds okay so let us unclutter the screen and just keep these things here. Let me say this as a numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial. We are going to look at this input step input. We are going to look at the uh, controlled output. We are also going to look at the frequency response of this we shall look at the frequency response of the plant alone and we shall look at the combined frequency response of the plant and the controller gc gp together to get an understanding of what is happening so this um, system let us incorporate it into MATLAB and see how it behaves. Now, let me shift uh, the computer screen uh, to the MATLAB environment. Now, in the MATLAB environment, we are, we are now in the MATLAB environment as you can see here. Let us take um, uh, a text editor and uh, write down these things. This is a small script exactly what we did in the last class. Let me mark this and bring your attention to the controller. Now, you see here the controller is defined by a numerator polynomial and a denominator polynomial the controller here is an integrator we are also defining the frequency from 10 to the power of minus 3 to 10 to the power of 3 we are getting the controllers frequency response by giving the parameters the numerator and the denominator polynomials of the controller then as a subplot plotting a semi log x plot of the gain versus the frequency. So, this is what we are uh, we we actually uh, performed in the last class the same thing has now been put into the um, a script file. Okay. Now, we have here let me bring your attention to this part of the script it is the script for the plant. Plant has the numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial exactly same as what we did in the last class. The plant frequency response okay, and then subplotting it on the same graph. See that we are plotting it on the same uh, subplot and um, uh, the semi log x of that one in a different color we have used the red color here and we have used the black color for the earlier one. Then we shall combine the plant and the controller transfer functions together by using convolution convolving the numerator and the denominator polynomials of the plant and the con controller 
and then obtaining the frequency response of the plant and controller transfer function together and again plotting it on the same sub plot and we shall give a blue color to that one. So, in sequence we shall plot these uh, frequency responses and then finally, we shall try to extract the closed loop response. We are doing a closed loop feedback of the controller and the plant numerator polynomial, controller and the plant denominator polynomial, unity feedback numerator and denominator, which will give G C G P by 1 plus G C G P. That is, this is the closed loop numerator and denominator polynomials. Then let us do a subplot because this is a time plot unlike the frequency plots of the uh, previous uh, responses. This is a time plot, this is versus time and for a step response. Okay, yesterday we just saw how it was uh, how the integrator just uh, 1 by s was behaving. Today let us start uh, with a small value of gain 0 0.01. Okay, this is a small value of integrator gain which we are having and we shall run this script as such here in the MATLAB workspace. Remember that we have given the name here as example 1 ex1 dot m. So, we shall just type ex1 now let me expand this. So, you get a better this is the integrator minus 20 dB per decade remember that this is not DC this y axis here is not DC it is not 0 frequency it is 10 to the power of minus 3. So, as it starts going 10 to the power of minus 6, 10 to the power of minus 9 so on, this value will start hitting a very very large value and that in fact is the plus point of the integrator where at DC we want an infinite value to make the error 0 at steady state. Now, we shall see the frequency response of the plant in the red color. So, this is the frequency response of the plant. You see that it is flat up to some point and then starts behaving like a low pass filter and being a third order ultimately you will see that it will start reducing at a rapid rate of uh, minus 60 dB per decade. So, this is how the plant frequency response looks like. Now, let us see the plant and the controller together. So, what would happen is that in the log scale multiplication of G C and G P is nothing but addition of the log d b amplitudes. So, you just have to add the integrator um, uh, dB gain with the plant dB gain. So, you will see that at near around the DC or the steady state, the plant gain is pulled up and now you see this is the 0 line and here below 0 which means attenuation the plant gain is pulled down. Okay. So, that is what the modification would happen you see the blue line. So, the blue line is actually getting pulled down up to this point 
compared to the red line the plant line and the blue line goes up the gain is gain has actually increased near the DC. So, if you allow me to expand here you will see that the blue line is uh, actually increased has been pulled up. Okay. And then if we look at the time response you see the time response we have given a very low gain is actually very slow. It has not even reached steady state in time uh, 10 seconds. So, let us try by increasing the gain k i. Let us increase the, increase the gain k i by a factor of 10 from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 and see what happens. You will see the time response is the integrator response. This is the plant response, frequency response and the uh, response of the uh, system and you see that it is cutting the 0 line much further which means the bandwidth has improved and that should get reflected in the time response. You see the time uh, in the time response it is already trying to reach uh, unity uh, at 10 seconds. You could further increase the gain. So, let us say we double it 0 0.2 and you will quickly see that this is the integrator. Let me expand that. The system response, this is the system and the control response together blue line and the time response. See that the time response we have overshot and then it is ultimately trying to um, stabilize at some point later on. So, if you want to view uh, more of the time response you can go and change the end time or the final time here. You can probably say 50 seconds up to 50 seconds and see the response. the time response of the system. So, like that one can fine tune uh, the gains of the integrator to achieve better closed loop response. So, what is it that we have done here? We have the frequency plot and the time plot the integrator starting from a very large value infinite value going down at 20 db per decade so, if this were 0 dB, this implies unity gain. If it is 0 dB, that implies unity gain. And we saw that we could choose any of the parallels by choosing appropriately the value of k i, the scaling for the integrator. 
which actually cuts the 0 dB line or the unity gain bandwidth at different points. So, as k i is decreased you will see the unity gain bandwidth reducing. If k i is increased you will see the unity gain bandwidth increasing. So, if I increase k i you will be choosing you will be choosing uh, higher and higher bandwidth. So, now let us let us say that at some point of time we have the step response let us let us say this is the step change that I give and the response with the integrator was something like that. And the intent now is to reduce this error. Ideally, I would like to have 0 error at every instant of time. However, that is not possible you can have infinite gain now only at the steady state. So, at the steady state the error is taken care of. How do we reduce the error near around the transients? So, let us say we shape the curve in the following fashion. So, let us say at around this point the integrator gain with frequency was coming down in this fashion. Now, instead of coming down let us let us make a change at this point instead of coming down it starts going like this. How do we bring this about? This is possible by introducing that introduce some component let us introduce a proportional component or let us say in the transfer function right now the controller transfer function g c was k i by s. Let me go to the next page. Now, let us make g c as k i by s plus another component just a proportional gain. So, this is equivalent to saying you have a comparator plus minus, you have the reference, you have the feedback, the error e. It used to go through just an integrator. Now, you are also making it go through a proportional gain and you add it up plus and plus and use that as your controller output. Now, look at this. If you combine these two, you have k i 
plus k p s by s. Or if you want to simplify it in some form, you could say k p s plus k i by k p by s. So, just by adding this new component, we have introduced in the numerator as 0. In the numerator polynomial, you will see as 0 coming into the picture. So, what is the character of the 0? So, you have you have such a transfer function now g c if i take the frequency some point of time uh, sorry at some point in the uh, frequency plot space the integrator we saw it just keeps going down at minus 20 db per decade. Now, if you look at the 0 like a derivative wherever it comes into uh, effect. Now, let us say it comes into effect at this point, this point corresponds to corresponds to this frequency of omega is equal to k i by k p. The 0 will start increasing at plus 20 d b per decade. So, taken together this minus 20 d b per decade and the plus 20 d b per decade of the 0 will cancel and you will get a gain which is kind of independent of frequency. So, that is what is happening at this point here when we say we just want to make it flat like this independent of frequency, it implies that at this point we have interposed or we have introduced a 0. We have introduced a 0 to become active at that point, at that point of the frequency. So, which would mean that the 0 would start going like that, the pole uh, the integrator pole contributing minus 20 d b per decade. So, from then on you will see that they both will cancel and then you will have a flat portion like this. Now, what have we gained? We have gained in gain. Remember that if we had not introduced a 0 at this point, the, the, the integrator, the controller gain would have just dropped like that. But now, the controller gain is more than what it would have been 
if we had not added the 0. Understand that if we had not added the 0, the controller gain would have just dropped off along this line minus 20 dB per decade. Now, because we have added the 0, the gain, controller gain has now become flat here as you see. Compared to the earlier case, as frequency is increasing, we see these green arrows are the amount of gain in gain. So, this gain in gain has a tendency to help the transients. You see that there is no change in the DC portion. The DC portion of the controller gain remains the same, which means this portion of the time response is not going to get affected. Only the high frequency portion of the gain has been increased compared to what it was before. And once the high frequency portion of the gain is increased, you will see a faster response in the transient portion of the time response. So, we expect that the time response should be faster. like that. So, this effect is brought about by the introduction of the 0 or we should say the introduction of the proportional part, the P part of the PID controller. Now, let us see if we are able to introduce the proportional part into the controller the same controller that we had been working uh, with in MATLAB. So, what will become the numerator and the denominator portion of the polynomial? So, we have G c as k i plus k p s by s. which is the numerator polynomial and the denominator pol. So, in MATLAB you can say the numerator polynomial is nothing but and k i, where this is the s to the power of 0 term, this is the s to the power of 1 term and the denominator polynomial is 1 and 0 s to the power of 0 term and s to the power of 1 term. So, this becomes our new controller representation in MATLAB. This is the proportional plus integral part of the controller or the P i controller. You have two things to design or choose here. You have to choose Ki and Kp. You have already chosen and fixed Ki, so you need not touch that. Now, you need to choose only Kp to decide the point of introduction, point of introduction of the 0 and the 0 is actually decided by k i by k p ratio. Now, in the MATLAB environment, let me close all the previous things. Now, let us open that script file. So, in the script file, we are still using the same plan. So, we need not disturb this portion. These are all in terms of the variables, controller and plant variables. So, these portion, portions also will not get disturbed. The only place where 
we are going to introduce a change is in the controller, numerator and denominator polynomials. We also are introducing one new degree of freedom which is k p. So, let us say k p equals, let us again start k p with uh, a small uh, value. Zero point zero one, and the numerator polynomial becomes k p k i, isn't it? This is what we just now saw, and the denominator polynomial is by s. So there is no change in the denominator polynomial; it remains as one and zero coefficients of um, s. So, now this controller becomes a proportional plus integral controller. All else remains same. So, let us see what we can achieve. We can probably try to uh, tune uh, this k p uh, increase and decrease and see what is the effect. So, let us run this again e x 1. Notice the change. We have this, this is the integral portion and somewhere at this point, we have introduced a 0. At what point? At the point where you have s is equal omega is equal to k i by k p and we know that k i is 0 0.2, k p is um, 0 0.01, k i by k p is nothing but uh, 2. And you see here uh, nothing but 20 and you see at around 20 here, there is a change in the slope and starts uh, going uh, to a flat gain at this point of time. So, this is precisely what uh, we wanted to achieve that is change in the slope of uh, the controller curve. Now, superimpose the plant curve, there is no change in the plant curve, it is the same plant and together with the plant and the controller. So, you see that the uh, DC portion, the steady state portion will remain more or less same. So, you will see the consolidated curve taking a higher value here and then start getting attenuated from here onwards. The attenuation here will be not as much as it had been in the case of um, the just pure integrator and therefore, you have now a higher gain at this in these regions that is in the higher frequency regions and in the time response it gets reflected as better transients or better dynamics. So, this is the consolidated curve, the blue curve and uh, let us say this is the time response. The time response, there is not much change in the steady state. You probably should observe maybe in this regions. Now, let us say we, we look the time curve at up to uh, let us say 15, 15 seconds here. Okay. So, that we uh, zoom in, we, uh, we shall we shall change the time response portion to give us a response up to up to 15 seconds now 
Now, look at this rise time around 5, 5 seconds. Remember that we shall re-execute it by adjusting the value of Kp. What happens if we change the value of Kp? Now, let us go to the whiteboard at this point and see. Let us see here what happens if we change the value of Kp. We are not touching Ki. You are going to increase the value of Kp. What does it mean? This point is shifted lower to a lower frequency point, which means at the lower frequency point itself, the flattening will start to occur, which means the gain is actually higher. The gain in gain is more. So, one would have gained a much higher gain by increasing the value of Kp. A much higher gain should actually reflect in a better or faster response here. So, this is the effect that we want to actually see. Let us again shift to the MATLAB uh, environment. Let us increase this Kp by a factor of 10, we make it 0 0.1 and re-execute the script file. So, you see, you see the turn point at which it takes a turn is, is at 2 here and the dB gain is minus 20 dB and in the earlier case, it was still further down. So, you see that the response is much better with the rise time slightly better than uh, 5. You could further increase and keep trying. So, let us uh, increase to let us say 1, Kp of 1. So, you see that the point it flattens out was 20, minus 20 dB, now it is at 0 dB unity gain. and you have the consolidated graph, frequency plot, blue line and then you have. So, you see here a nice effect you should notice. What has happened? there is a fast rise here. Now, this fast rise corresponds to a quite a high gain that has been attained because of the flattening of the controller. So, this portion is higher than before. <coughs> so, this is rising quite, um, uh, quite fast here. But we kept on shifting the uh, frequency at which it uh, flattens out uh, to the left, thereby trying to reduce the uh, bandwidth. So, the gain here, there is not much improvement in the gain. The proportional part quickly hands over control to the integral part. 
So, the proportional part is coming into the zero effect is coming into effect only for a very small portion of the time here which is corresponding to the high frequency gain. Remember that the system is staying in the high frequency part for a very short while. So, if we expand this, the moment there is a disturbance, the moment there is a disturbance, a step change, the system is immediately shifted to the high frequency state and the system starts gradually coming down to the DC part, the steady state portion. In the time response, this is the disturbance of the transient state gradually going towards the steady state. Now, as the system is going from a high frequency agitated state towards the steady state, it is passing the proportional part or the proportional effect and once it has passed into the proportional effect and goes into the integral uh, gain effect, you see the integral action coming taking over at this point. So, this is the proportional part, proportional action, proportional action loses control here, gives hands the baton over to the integral part, the integral part is taking over from here, taking it to a 0 steady state error kind of a thing. So, uh, this, this is the effect that you would uh, keep uh, seeing by modifying these uh, parameters. You could probably uh, experiment with uh, many more things. You will see that probably you will get a very high uh, overshoot because of this high gain and then quickly it will hand over control to the integral part which, um, which will take its own time to again reach the steady state. You see the um, consolidated, the consolidated gain integral, then you have uh, a steady portion and then the falling portion here. See this is basically because we have increased the proportional gain too much and then uh, it is um, taking quite a long time to stabilize. You will see that it will take, it is oscillating around 1 and uh, it is uh, growing and probably becoming unstable. And this is where you will need to fine tune uh, these gains to be within the bounds of stability. So, you no normally will start from a low value and start uh, increasing it. Uh, till you achieve satisfactory step uh, time response. Now, um, uh, we will of course, come to uh, come uh, later on discuss the sequence in which we will be increasing the various parameter gains um, before we um, uh, stop at uh, 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 stop at the best uh, best frequency response or the best parameter value to get the best frequency response. Uh, uh, that sequence we will of course, cover later. We still have uh, some more topic to cover uh, in terms of uh, the uh, next component which is the uh, derivative component. How do we include the derivative part? So, if we uh, look at the controller, we have the proportional, proportional integral, uh, integral, the proportional integral and now we want to include one more part. So, let us look at one more aspect of our PID controller and that is the derivative part. Maybe we shall see the effect on the whiteboard first. You saw that we have the integrator. This is the integrator i which is going at minus 20 dB per decade. 
and then let us say we have the proportional part. Let us say somewhere here we introduce a 0 that is we started with k i by s and to this let us add k p and the addition of k p introduced as 0 at this point of value k i a k p k i by k p and not only that it changed the shape of the gain curve what was going down at minus 20 db per decade it became flat and then somewhere at this point let us let us do one more thing let us have a zero at this point now a zero means one more plus 20 db per decade change so from minus 20 db we added a zero it became 0 db because we added plus 20 db every decade now at this point if you introduce one more zero you will shift the curve again the different slope now this will be going at plus 20 db per decade keeps going like that but it cannot keep going like that um, uh, as omega tends to infinity we cannot have just plain kd into s there will be an s plus a you need to have a pole k d into s is not realizable k d into s by s plus a is realizable. So, what would happen this goes on at uh, plus 20 db per decade at somewhere at this point this pole comes into effect let us say we design such that this pole comes into effect at around this frequency. So, what will happen what was going at plus 20 db per decade will take a turn back minus take a turn back by minus 20 db per decade and go in a manner which is flat again. So, this is coming into effect at omega equal to a. this portion this blue portion highlighted darkened portion is a derivative component we saw that we had we started with three components one was the integrator component then the proportional component and then the third component the derivative component which has the 20 db per decade rise and then after a particular point, point in frequency pole comes into the picture and then behave fla, uh, behaves in a way the gain flattens out. So, this is the derivative component and uh, this is achieved by adding this k d s by s plus a. Now, what have we achieved by doing this? look at the response. So, let us say we have a step input at this point by the integral action at around d c. I know the integrator is giving a very high gain 
and therefore e is equal to 0 steady state error. But integrator alone would have given a response something like that. But then as the system the moment there is a dynamics as the system is changing from an agitated state towards steady state or DC the gains here and this gains come into effect. So, the moment there is a agitation moment there is a transient the gain in the high frequency region comes into the picture and they are the ones which are trying to uh, pull the response up. So, the derivative action which is here comes first into play probably pulls the um, output uh, quickly up and then as the system is traversing from uh, high frequency to the low frequency side the derivative hands over the baton to the proportional part and the proportional part takes over and but the proportional part gain is much lower. So, it starts to drop and then quickly the baton is handed over to the uh, integrator part and you will see it moving in this fashion. So, the derivative part quickly pulls it up because the gain in gain is much higher than the proportional. See the proportional part the gain in gain was only um, up to this extent, but the gain in gain compared to the proportional part is so much more in the case of the derivative. So, therefore, that would be very, very uh, fast the action would be very, very fast. However, keep in mind all these high frequency portions are noise sensitive. So, this can the gains here can amplify the noise in this region and if you give a high value of scalar scaling k d or k p it can destabilize the system or deteriorate the performance instead of making it better. So, you have to be cautious while including uh, the d portion and the uh, p portion uh, because they are actually gains at the noise sensitive zones of the frequency spectrum. Uh, and this tuning has to be done uh, specific to the plant specific to each plant uh, to get the optimal performance but best performance. So, we will see how we go about choosing the various values of k i k p k d in the uh, next classes. Thank you.